MSQ question. Now coming to question number 147, this is also an MSQ question. Uh, in this, uh, they're asking which among the following statements are true with respect to the protein denaturation. Okay, so uh, there may be an increase in alpha helix and beta pleated structure. Basically protein denaturation may what happens, the structure is broken, but the peptide bond, that means the primary structure doesn't break, only the second degree or third degree uh, structures are getting converted into primary degree uh, structures, but the structure, uh, the peptide bond, the chain doesn't break. So the peptide bond doesn't break in case of protein denaturation. So option D is wrong. That means uh, they are giving that peptide bonds are broken, but it is not true in case of protein denaturation. It may be reversible or it, it may be irreversible both. So this option is not correct as of now because uh, it may be reversible or it may not be reversible. So uh, we can say key option B is also not correct. Coming to option A again, there may be an increase in alpha helix and beta beta structure, which is possible, which is very much possible because the third degree carbon, third degree protein hai, that is getting denatured, it may convert into second degree and the second degree may convert to one degree or it may stay over here only. So hence, we can say that option A is correct. That means if there may be an increase in alpha helix and beta plated structure, which are second degree structures. So option A is correct. Option C, when fully denatured, globular proteins resemble a random coil. Yeah, because globular protein, may have, we have three degree structures more. And when it is denatured, the other bonds, that means other than the peptide bonds, maybe the hydrogen bonds, yeah, but our covalent bonds, they break because of which there is no uh, particular bonding. And hence, uh, only the peptide bonds remain, peptide structure remains, and therefore they may resemble a coil. They are connected in such a way and they may resemble a random coil like this. Hence, option A and C and option uh, A and C are correct options for this question. Moving ahead, coming to question 148, that means identify the correct pairs of milling equipment and the grain for which it is used. Mist polisher, we use polishing in case of rice and we use a mist polisher or a cone polisher in case of rice, uh, polishing of the rice. So hence option A is correct. Coming to break roll system in wheat, we have two roll system. One is the break milling system and the other one is reduction milling system. So this break milling system, what it does, it converts, it uh, produce uniform middlings, uniform middlings, and also it removes the bran in form of flakes and germ. Hence, we use the break rolls and the reduction rolls. The option given is break rolls in case of wheat. So option B is also correct. Coming to option C, it says rubber roll is used for pigeon pea milling, which is not true. We use uh, uh, rollers that are coated with carborandum in order to uh, mill the pulses. And uh, hence, this is not correct. So option C is not the correct answer. And uh, Option D, that is we all degermer. We need to degerm the maze and we use this degermer to de, uh, degerm the maze and hence we use this. Therefore, for this MSQ question, A, B, and D are the right answers. Whereas, moving ahead, coming to question number 149, that uh, which among the following expression is or are correct. Here we have Reynolds number, which is uh, density into velocity to characteristic dimension divided by viscosity that is rho v d by mu which is correct this is also an msq question nasserit number option b nasserit number is equal to convective heat transfer hd and thermal conductivity of solid that means hd by k but in this case nasserit number may they are writing that it is equal for solids it is not valid for solids it is for fluids Hence, this wrong. Nasserit number wala option is wrong. Coming to schematic number, which is equal to kinematic viscosity upon the diffusivity, which is correct. Hence, option C is correct. But buyout number, it is equal to convective heat transfer character into characteristic dimension divided by thermal conductivity of fluid. But in case of buyout number, we talk about solids. Hence, this is also wrong. That means this ka interchange ho rakha hai. So only option C and A are correct. For this question, uh, Reynolds number and Schmidt number ka expression is correct. Coming to question number 150, in sieve analysis of a coffee powder, the particle size distribution is given. We need to find out the sorter mean di diameter of the coffee powder in micrometers. 
Now, this sorter mean diameter is also called the volume surface mean diameter. The formula that we use in order to find this sorter mean diameter is, I'm writing it in the short form, that is diameter dsp. volume surface mean diameter will be equal to sigma d cube into n divided by sigma into d square into n. That means the diameter jo aapko de rakha hai, particle size diameter and n will be the number of particles that are retained on this particle size or that are of this particle size. Hence, we'll use this summation formula for this. d cube would be 40 whole cube multiplied by n that is 5 plus 30 whole cube multiplied by 8 plus 20 whole cube multiplied by 15 plus 17.5 whole cube multiplied by 90 plus 12.5 whole cube multiplied by 148 similarly it will be 10 ka whole cube multiplied by 10 divided by d square into n that means diameter ka square multiplied by n 40 square into 5 plus 30 square into 8 plus 20 square into 50 plus 17.5 ka whole square multiplied by 90 because 90 are the number of particles similarly for the other two uh, number of particles that is 12.5 whole square multiplied by 148 plus 10 ka whole square into 10. So on solving, we'll be finding out, we'll find out that the value of this DSVM, that is the diameter, volume surface mean diameter, and it will be equal to uh, approximately 19.765, 19.765 micrometers, but it says round off to one decimal place, and we need to round it off to one decimal place, and it will be 19.8 micrometers. So the answer is 19.8 micrometer for this question. That means we have found the analysis for this. Coming to question number 151, it is uh, in a dairy processing plant, milk enters a 30 meter long and a 2 centimeter diameter tube at 60 degrees Celsius and leaves at 57 degrees Celsius. The heat loss over the tube is given, okay, and the heat capacity, density, and viscosity of the milk is given. We have to find out the Reynolds number. Now, so the uh, formula for Reynolds number is rho V D upon mu. We are given with density, viscosity, and the diameter of the tube, but we don't know anything about the velocity. Hence, we have to find out the velocity first. So, uh, the heat loss over the length of the tube is given, that is, uh, 381.15 which will be equal to mcp delta t right so we can find out mcp delta t where cp is already given the specific heat capacity is given we just need to put it over here 0.15 uh, mass would be over the length we are talking about hence we are talking about watt per minute so it will be mass flow rate and to cp that is 3.85 into 10 to the power 3 multiplied by delta t, delta t, that means 60 degrees Celsius, it enters and it leaves at 57 degrees Celsius and delta t would be 3. So on solving, we'll get a uh, mass flow rate to be 0 0.033 kg per second. That means this is the mass flow rate for this. Uh, if we are given with mass flow rate, we can find out the velocity somehow. So mass flow rate uh, will be converted into volume metric flow rate that will be mass flow rate divided by density that is 0 0.033 divided by density density ki value would be 1020 and hence the volumetric flow rate would be we'll find out and, uh, and to convert this volumetric flow rate into velocity we can divide this volumetric flow rate into uh, by area we can divide it by area so volumetric flow rate divided by area would be equal to um the value of volumetric flow rate, let's just calculate the value of volumetric flow rate first. So 0 0.33 divided by 1020 and this coming as 0 0.0003 23. 
so uh, area would be 0 0 0 0 3 2 3 3 2 3 divided by area that means pi by 4 into d square so pi by 4 into d square we just have to put the value of d square over here the diameter is given that is 2 centimeter uh, we'll have to convert this 2 centimeter into meters first that means 0 0.02 meter and then we'll put it over here and we'll get the value of velocity it will come around 0 0.1029 meters per second hence we can put these values in the uh, the formula for the Reynolds number Reynolds number is equal to rho v d by mu rho key value is density is given to be 1020 velocity we have found that it that is 0 0.1029 multiplied by the diameter that is 0 0.02 divided by viscosity which is given um, into centivoids that means we have to multiply it by 10 to the power minus 3 to convert it into uh, pascal seconds and hence on solving we'll get the Reynolds number around 1749.3 and it says we have to give the value round it off to the nearest integer hence we will round it off and it will be 1749 1749 would be the answer for this question 1749 coming to the next question uh, apple juice flows through a steel pipe having a thermal conductivity of 50 that means k key value is given the outer surface of the pipe is exposed to the ambient environment. The inside diameter and the thickness of the pipe is given. The overall heat transfer coefficient based on the area, the inside area, that means UI is given, which is 25 watts per minute. If the internal heat transfer coefficient is 30, that means HI is equals to 30. H0 would be, we have to find out H0. We have to find out H0 and value of K is given at 50. That means it is a composite heat transfer um composite heat transfer that means composite materials heat transfer is occurring so let's just draw the diagram in order to have a better understanding so this is the pipe through which apple juice is flowing and this is the outer diameter of it this is the ambient which heat transfer coefficient is h i h naught here we have h i and here we have k it is a cylindrical pipe whose uh, diameter is given as 3 cm. That means its radius is 1.5 cm and the outer diameter would be, uh, sorry, outer, this thing, outer radius would be 3 cm. Because the thickness is 1.5, so 1.5, 1.5 would be 3 cm. And hence the outer diameter, that means diameter in the outer surface would be 6 cm and inner diameter is three centimeters now uh, the formula for this composite heat transfer in terms of internal heat uh, transfer coefficient so it will be one by ui is equals to one by hi plus Not by Ri divided by K plus Ri divided by R0 into H0. So, uh, what we can write over here is the value of Hi is already given. The value of Hi is already given that is 1 by 30. Okay, so Ui is given as 25. Hi is 1 by 30 plus radius in, in internal radius would be 1.5 centimeters. So I'll just have to convert it into meters that is 1.5 divided by 100 into ln R0 that is 3 and uh, into Ri is 1.5. So ln 2 divided by k value of k is given that is 50 plus Ri internal wala radius that is 1.5 centimeters divided by 100 so as to convert it into meters r naught that is 3 centimeters divided by 
100 multiplied by h naught h naught we have to find out so we can write on solving this equation we'll be getting the value of, we have to find out value of h naught and on solving this equation we'll get the value of h naught it will come around 77.419 hence and we have to round off it to two decimal places hence the value of h naught would be 77.42 approximately and this would be in what per meter square per kelvin is the answer for this question 152 would be 77.42 watt per meter square per kelvin the last question for this would be the dry bulb temperature and the relative humidity of air inside a storage chamber are here the dbt is given and the rh is given that is 50 percent the saturation pressure of water vapor at 37 degrees celsius is this and the total pressure are this okay and the barometric pressure that means the total pressure uh, is 103 uh, 101.32 kilopascal respectively the humidity ratio of air inside the chamber we have to find out so the uh, formula for rh rh is equals to pv by pvs at a particular temperature so if we are talking about at uh, 37 degrees celsius so rh is given as 50 divided by 100 which will be equal to um PV that is we have to find out the value of PV and PVS is already given that is the saturation pressure vapor pressure at 37 degrees Celsius it is 6.28 kilopascal so we have to find out PV on solving we will be getting the value of PV to be 3.14 kilopascals and we have to find out the humidity ratio now humidity ratio is denoted by omega omega will be equal to 0 0.622 PV by pt minus ka pv that means pv is the vapor pressure at a particular temperature and pt is the total vapor pressure total pressure of the atmospheric pressure that means the barometric pressure so we just have to put this value of pv that we have found and omega would be known now we have to just put it over here 0.622 into pv where pv is 3.14 divided by 101.32 minus ka 3.14 and uh, on solving, we'll be getting the value as 0 0.01989. Specific humidity or the humidity ratio is equal to mass of vapor divided by mass of air. So the units are kg water per kg air, kg water vapor per kg air. So uh, the value of this humidity ratio is 0 0.01989 kg water per kg air, and we have to round it off to three decimals places so it is nearly equal to 0 0.0199 which be the answer for this question